But let's kind of walk that back a little bit to your scenario, which is much more subtle. Let's say that my, um, my chronotype, and your chronotype simply determines whether you're a morning person, an evening person, or somewhere in the middle. About 30% of the population is a, an extreme morning type or a morning type. Um, about uh, sort of 40% is sort of neither strongly morning or evening, and about the remaining 30% is an evening type. We call them owls and larks. Um, now, so if you're a morning type, you like to go to bed at, let's say, like 9 p.m. and wake up at 5 or 6. If you're an evening type, you may want to go to bed at 1 a.m. and wake up at 9 um, a.m. the next morning. So when I'm saying the optimal position of sleep, I'm saying the optimal for your chronotype. Yeah. This is your chronotype. And by the way, it's genetic. You don't get to decide whether you're a morning type or an evening type. It's hardwired into your genes. We know the genes. It's not your fault. If you're an evening type and you're listening to this and society, which is strongly architected against your chronotype, we, we reward and we favor the morning types. Um, it is not your fault. It's not a choice. And it, there's not too much you can do about it. You can push and pull the system by about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but not much more. So coming back to it, when we position that sleep on that eight hour period, wherever is optimal for you, you will get a nice distribution. You'll get all of the deep sleep that you want and all of the REM sleep that you want. And earlier in the conversation, I said that we go through these 90 minute cycles, we human beings, it's different for different animals. You always go into deep non-REM sleep first and then you always have REM sleep second. And that repeats every 90 minutes throughout the night. What changes, however, is the ratio of non-REM to REM within those 90 minute cycles as you move across the night, such that in the first half of the night, the majority of those 90 minute cycles are comprised of lots of deep non-REM sleep and very little REM sleep. In the second half of the night, that balance shifts and now you get much more REM sleep in the late morning hours and very little deep sleep. The reason I'm saying this is because let's take someone who goes to bed at a standard amount of time. Let's say that they go to bed at midnight and they're going to wake up at eight. But instead, they have to wake up because they've got an early morning meeting. So they go to bed at midnight and they wake up at six. And my question is, how much sleep have they lost? And your response is, well, they've lost two hours out of the eight hour, which means they've lost 25% of their sleep. And your answer would be right in a way, but it would be wrong as well, which is that they've lost 25% of their total sleep, but they may have lost almost 80% of their REM sleep because that's the REM rich phase of the night. And it also works the other way around too, that if you go to bed too late, you will, the br so what happens is because of the circadian rhythm, the brain has a different appetite for different stages of sleep on the 24 hour clock face. In the late evening and the early morning hours, the brain has a dietary <laughs> preference for deep sleep. And it doesn't very much have an appetite taste for REM sleep through to the second half of the night, that's when it gets its appetite for REM sleep. So if you start sleeping at four o'clock in the morning and you wake up at, in the middle of the day, your brain has lost its appetite for deep sleep. And so it won't get much. Now you will probably get much more REM sleep as a consequence. So you've got to be really careful. That's so it's almost like your chronotype may even dictate in a way how much deep well, sleep you the may chronotype get. Will, will if you sleep naturally and you get the amount yeah. of sleep that you want, your chronotype will probably mean that you will, your circadian rhythm is actually shifted, shifted. as a chronotype okay. too. So you will still get, as, a, as an owl, if you get your eight hours when you want it, you will probably get a similar sleep architecture as a lark who has gone to bed five or six hours earlier because your circadian rhythms are five to six hours different. But you're right in the sense that owls typically try to go to bed early, but because they are designed not to fall asleep at that time, they're just gonna lie in bed. Many owls think that they have insomnia, they don't. They're just not going to bed at the right time mm -hmm. because they get into bed and it's like a teenager whose rhythm is also shifted late. You tell them to go to bed because you've got to wake up for early school start times, but there's nothing they can do because their circadian rhythm has shifted forward in time. And it's the same for owls. So what will happen is that they will probably stay awake for a little while, then they'll get into deep sleep, but then they have to wake up at an earlier time and they will lose a lot of REM sleep. REM sleep for emotional well-being. What do owls typically experience? Depression, low mood, anxiety. 
So I think we're really starting to put the pieces together on, on that component. And, and so for someone like me, um, I'm somewhere in the middle, like to, when, I'm, when I don't, pre-baby. Now I'm, I guess you would call a lark because I'm going to bed at like nine. My, my optimal time, if I can go to bed when my son does, then it's like, you know, if I go to bed at like eight, then I get the longer duration. That way if I'm more, a little more fragmented, right. then I like at least can make up for it somewhat. But I'm up at 6 a.m. Now, if it were up to me, I'd like to sleep. I usually would wake up at like 8 a.m. Yes. Like that's yeah, yeah, my yeah. natural And the time. reason that you can probably go to sleep at sort of, you know, 9 p.m. or even 8 p.m. now is because you're chronically sleep deprived. Yeah. And as a consequence, you've built up such a sleep debt mm -hmm. that, you know, there is a lingering what we call sleep pressure in your system. Um, but, yeah, I think fighting your chronotype, we've found, comes with deleterious health consequences. Increased risk for poor cardiometabolic outcomes. Yeah. Things like, um, you know, C-reactive protein is higher. If you look at, you know, A1C in terms of sort of your, uh, sort of a raw shock of your blood glucose, um, your blood sugar, not good. If you look at your propensity for being uh, obese or um, uh, being overweight, also not great if you're an owl and you're not sleeping according to your schedule.